A U.S. Army official says the first batch of American Abrams tanks for Ukraine was approved for shipment over the weekend. And as is expected, they are expected those tanks to start arriving in the early fall. Meanwhile, Ukraine Security Service says it has detained a Russian informant involved in a plot to assassinate the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky. For more on this, uh, I'm joined now by CNN's Fred Pleitkin. Fred, tell our viewers what you're hearing. Hi there, Wolf. Well, certainly some pretty troubling accusations coming there from the Ukrainian security service, the SBU today, about that alleged plot to kill Volodymyr Zelensky. And all this is going on as the fighting continues to escalate in Ukraine, not just in the south of the country, but in the east of the country as well, where we're now hearing that the Russians are expending massive quantities of ammo. Here's what we're learning. Nearly half a million munitions. That's how much the Ukrainians say the Russian army fired at them in only a week's time on the Eastern Front. Still, Moscow reporting only modest gains. Over the past three days, the advance of Russian troops in this direction amounted to 11 kilometers along the front and more than three kilometers into the depth of the enemy's defense, the army spokesman says. But the Ukrainians say in most areas they are the ones advancing. And Kiev is hitting Putin's military behind the front lines as well. After Ukrainian sea drones hit both a Russian tanker and a warship in the past days, now an air attack damaging a vital bridge connecting occupied Crimea to Ukraine's mainland. A local Moscow-installed official trying to downplay the significance. These are sneaky punches, he says, really sneaky. They can't be forgiven. They are just snarled from a wounded animal. Strikes like these often made possible by Western-supplied, air-launched cruise missiles. Glory to Ukraine, President Zelensky wrote on a French model during a visit to his Air Force this weekend. But now, Ukraine's intelligence service says it foiled a Russian plot to assassinate Zelensky using an informant trying to scout out his whereabouts. The Ukrainians say questioning revealed the person was involved in other attempted plots as well. The Ukrainians say their troops have been making some gains on the southern front, putting pressure on entrenched Russian forces there. Russian President Vladimir Putin meeting with the boss of one of Russia's top arms makers, urging him to speed up manufacturing of modern weapons. Manufacturers promised me that they would increase the amount of production, he says. They deliver on that promise, but it needs to be increased even more. This Russian drone footage shows the aftermath of some of the fighting in Ukraine's south. Very little territory won or lost, but nearly every building completely destroyed. And Wolf, there was a phone call today between Ukraine's top general Valery Zaluzhny and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley. And in that phone call, the Ukrainian Zaluzhny, he told Milley that by and large, it still is the Ukrainians who have the initiative on the battlefield. Wolf? All right, we shall see. Fred Pleitkin reporting for us. Thank you very much. Let's get some more on all of these developments. Joining me now, CNN senior national security correspondent Alex Marquardt, who has just returned from several weeks reporting in Ukraine. Also with us, the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Ukraine and Russia, Evelyn Farkas. Uh, Alex, let me start with you. Uh, there have been many reported attempts uh, to try to assassinate President Zelensky uh, since the start at the, at the beginning of this war. How significant is this foiled assassination plot right now? Well, Wolf, it's very significant. It's another reminder of, of how much risk there is to even, and perhaps especially the leader of Ukraine. And it's another reminder of the counterintelligence challenges that Ukraine also faces in terms of trying to root out Russian spies and, and, and Russian sympathizers. Uh, this was, as you noted, a, a major goal of the Russians early on in the war. They wanted to capture and kill uh, President Zelensky and, and then eventually take over the whole country. Uh, President Zelensky has significant uh, security measures in place. He takes different kinds of transportation, never tells anyone uh, where he's going ahead of time. You were just at the NATO summit in, in Vilnius. Um, we, we thought that he might be going, but there was no announcement in, until he was there on the ground. Um, so, there, you know, I've been at these frontline cities and towns where there are very few people remaining. There's a huge 
level of suspicion to, to, for, for people who are still in those towns because uh, of what they might be telling the, the Russians. So um, whether it is uh, revealing to Russians the, the location of ammunition depots or any other logistical hubs or even the, the location of the president, um, there, is, there is no sense that that spying um, is, is ending anytime soon and, the, and that the Russian effort to, to kill Zelensky is going to end anytime yeah, it's soon. It's very worrisome indeed. Glad you're back safe and sound, Alex. Thank you. Evelyn, how much of a threat do you believe uh, this does pose to Zelensky, this attempted, uh, alleged attempted ass assassination attempt? Well, Wolf, I think this is really interesting, first of all, because I think the threat might be less than we think in the sense that the Ukrainians nabbed this person. They clearly were able to use technology to spy on the communications that this person had, this woman had, with whoever was controlling her in the Russian government. So it is a victory for Ukrainian counterintelligence. So maybe he is safer than he was yesterday, or maybe he is safer than we thought all along. But what's really interesting about this, I think, is, is we have to remember, when you're looking at a battlefield in the military, you look at the other side, and you try to assess what is their center of gravity, they call it, their strength. The strength for Ukraine is the will of their people. And the guy who really rallies the people, and not just the Ukrainian people, but all of us and the entire world, as we saw even in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia this past weekend, where they're okay, they're not all on Ukraine's side. But President Zelensky is the man who has led this huge effort to make sure that everybody keeps Ukraine in the forefront of their thoughts, keeps Ukraine on CNN screen, right? And keeps, and keeps as many people on board and tries to expand that, which is what he tried to do this weekend. Yes, he did. A very, very impressive performance from the Ukrainian president. Alex, uh, as I said, you're just back from the front lines in Ukraine, and I'm glad you're back safe and sound. What's your assessment right now of Ukraine's counteroffensive strategy? How's it unfolding? Well, you know, when you talk to everyone from uh, the defense minister, as I did, down to the soldiers at the front line, you know, what, what they'll tell you is that this is an extremely tough fight and they really want to downplay the expectation uh, that this is going to be fast and that they're going to achieve a major victory anytime soon. This is very much, Wolf, a, a grinding war of attrition. And the strategy that we're seeing in place right now is one where the, the Ukrainians believe that they have to just keep pushing forward using the weapons that they've gotten from the West, the ammunition, uh, you know, as much ammunition as they can gather, um, and, and their men to try to pierce through that line, uh, both on the southern front and, and the eastern front. And, and they know that that is going to take some time, so they're trying to grind away at the Russians. Um, there's no ace up their sleeve. That is, that is their tactic, and they believe that at some point, they will be able to pierce through those lines and, and that their, their efforts in the counteroffensive will accelerate. At the same time, Wolf, we're seeing these extraordinary attacks inside Russia, inside Russian-occupied Crimea, both at sea and the Black Sea against these ships in Russian ports, um, from the air with these aerial drones, and, and more and more of these drone strikes, both in the sea and in the air, that, that Ukraine uh, is, is, is claiming responsibility for. So they're trying to put pressure from the rear, both in terms of affecting Russian morale, but also affecting those, those, uh, that ammunition and, and other kinds of weapons, logistical lines, that will help the Russian effort um, in the south and the eastern part of the country. So they're trying to squeeze that so that that effort um, in the counteroffensive uh, can really achieve some success soon. Yeah, it's a sensitive, a, a clearly critical moment right now in this war. Alex, thank you very much. Evelyn, thanks to you as well.